Observation number six. Praise motivates humans. Hello everybody and welcome to the third and fourth playoff of the Yu-Gi-Oh! World, World Championships 2014 here in Rimini, Italy. Now our third and fourth is Nicola Mazzolini versus Oliver Tomiko. Yep. And uh, you've already seen both of these players play if you've been watching earlier. So they are playing Bujin over on Nicola's side and over with Oliver, he's playing Infernity. Things it really didn't end so well for Nicola last time around. No. And his deck was kind of fighting against him in the end, but he's got a shot here to redeem himself yeah. and get one last win at this World Championship and take third place. But, of course, they are all getting a really nice trophy and prize card. They certainly are. They are going to be taking home, I believe it's Da Vinci's flying machine. Yes. Yes, it is, although it's... Oh, the or sky. Silver Sky Ship. Yeah, that one it is. is. It's, it's based off of Da Vinci's flying machine, um, which is a very famous sketch by Da Vinci, where he essentially invented the helicopter before the helicopter was even conceived. Pretty much a genius, that guy. Yeah, well... Kind of by definition. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's going to be an interesting match, to say the least. Yes. I mean, we've seen both of these players just play the hearts out. And it looks like Oliver, of course, losing to... So how they, well, to it's the Infernity friend, Mirror basically. match. There's, sometimes you can't do anything yeah. in that particular matchup. It's probably the last one that you'd want to see in the semifinal. Well, you don't want to see it at all, but you definitely don't want to see it in the knockout round of a competition, especially this close to the end. Yeah. And that must have been absolutely heartbreaking for those two. Which does also mean that later we have uh, Infernity versus Artifact Trap Tricks as the final match. Which could be very interesting. Very interesting. This one, though, Mazzolini has a lot of cards that could give Tomiko trouble if he gets a chance to set them up. With a full complement of Vanity's Emptiness in his main deck, Fiendish Chain, all the Kaiser Colosseums, and triple effect failure. It's pretty clear that Mazzolini was ready for this matchup. Yeah. And we'll see if his deck comes through for him this time around. I think the reason why we're not seeing so many Infernity as much as we thought we would was because everybody thought everybody else is going to be playing Infernity. So I should beat it instead? Yeah, basically. I'm going to play against Infernity, and it turns out that most people weren't playing Infernity. <laughs> Sometimes it works out like that. I think for me, like if I was playing in this, I wouldn't want the added pressure of having to know so many intricate combos to be able to execute them flawlessly under this amount of pressure. Yeah. I like to play something that gives me a little less of a bit of a mental tax. Like, just a little bit less, though. But Sylvans. I yeah. could play Sylvans. Infernity is a step too far for me. It's probably why we see no spellbook. There's that. Well, there was the one spellbook player. Was there? There was, but he did not make it to day two because that deck is crazy There's to play. a lot of searching. Definitely. It comes to a point when I don't like shuffling anymore. No. No. And it's when I play spellbooks. Yeah. As we said yesterday, it's when your hands start to bleed. Yep. That, that's when you need to pick up a new deck. And as you said, new sleeves. New sleeves. But everybody, is, we've not mentioned the sleeves today. No, it's true. Look at the, uh, the World Championship sleeves that they're playing with. I believe players can get them here, can't yeah, they? I at think the they uh, shop we've got at the event. Yes. I remember hearing that it was possible to do so. Yeah. So anybody who wanted to take some home, either, oh, you could use them, or you could just keep them as a memento of the event. That is all possible if you're here. They are beautiful sleeves. And Looks like we're... And let's go ahead and uh, introduce our players. Yeah. Nicola Mazzolani, Italia. Oliver Tomiko, United States of America. All right, and here we are at the field. And it looks like we are just about ready to go. We're discussing who's going to go first. interesting method of choosing. This is the uh, the para and docs method. They used it on the TV show when uh, the pharaoh was attempting to deceive para and docs to get them to reveal which door was the correct one out of the labyrinth. Yeah. And he succeeded in doing so. Uh, I believe that was also our head judge. Hmm? That was our head judge. That, that was, was our head judge. Well, Martina. I wonder if she's a classic series fan. She must be. Hmm. Everybody's a classic series fan. You'd be shocked. Really? There's at least one person in the office who has never seen the classic series. Well, that doesn't mean they're not a fan. And I'm sure if they saw it. We keep trying to fix that. 
but she's never around. Michael starting things off with a pair of face down cards. Uh, no, they've not quite started yet by the look of it. Oh. He's just drawing into his hand. Actually, they're just starting right now. Right, here they go. Drawing the opening hand. Sure looked like face down cards, though. It's important to keep clear communication with your opponent of what all the cards are, especially if you like to set down your hand on the play mat so nobody yeah. thinks they're actually set cards. Had that issue in the last match. Here we go. We're getting some information. All right. And Niccolo is going first, and he has a Kaiser Coliseum. Not bad. He doesn't have a whole lot of anything to go with it. Nothing that can stand up to an 1800 attack monster, or even a 1700 attack monster. No, unfortunately. You have to crash not. with the hair. Now, unfortunately, Oliver has that. He's got the Space Typhoon, but Niccolo does have. The uh, effect failure in his hand, and Tomiko has opened up with four monsters. And that is absolutely devastating. Mystical Space Typhoon takes out Kaiser Coliseum right away. Dinotherium is special summoned. Greffer also summoned. And he discards Archfiend Eris. It's all kicking off. It's all kicking off, and now Niccolo has to decide whether he's going to use his effect failure right now or on an Xyz monster to come, or on an Archfiend when that invariably gets summoned. Infernity is incredibly consistent. Like, I've not seen it where it's not really kicked off, and even if it hasn't, it just waits a couple of turns and then it does. That's one of the risks you play, or you take when you play a combo deck, is the chance that your own deck will defeat you. Yeah and you just won't be given the cards you need to operate. That Dynatherium is a real godsend for Oliver here because it let him get a second summon on the field in a hand that otherwise was devoid of all special summoning. And now, considering still whether or not to activate the Veiler. If you've got the effect failure in this situation, you kind of have to guess at what your opponent has in their hand. Or what they're about to do. From our vantage point, we see that Oliver has two monsters, and he's already used his normal summon for the turn. Lava Law Chain. Crucial here for Tomiko. He needs to choose the correct effect for Lava Little Chain. And he goes to send to the graveyard. The card he sends is Infernity Archfiend. Now he has the Necromancer in his hand and the Street Patrol loaded up as well, but he's got that other Greffer in his hand that he still needs a way to get rid of. No way to get the Greffer out for now. Infernity Archfiend always reminds me of Zolga. Hmm. Very similar artwork. That's not a connection I would have made. Maybe in another life, Infernity Archfiend was Zolga. And Mikazuchi was Chaz Princeton. <laughs> Book attack later. from Tomiko. Ends Just the turn. Nice little poke with the chain. Yep, you got to get the hair off the field, even though it does put it into the graveyard where its effect will be useful. It's that, or let it be used for an Xyz summon. And there's the Yamato. It's a shame for Niccolo that that Mystical Space Typhoon was there. It is, but he still has the effect failure, and I think he very wisely is saving it for the Archfiend. Yeah. Or for the Necromancer that would get back the Archfiend. Just be careful, though, if you're going to use Effect Failure against Infernity Necromancer, you better be able to take it out that turn. Yeah. Mato Arasuda deciding which one to throw down. The best he can really get out of the Yamato if he attacks is to crash with the Lava Bow Chain. And that could be good enough because it'll stop Oliver. Oh, that's right. Forgot about the hair there for a yep. second. The hair protects Yamato, crashes with chain, and Yamato stays on the field. 
not a bad turn at all for Niccolò. It always makes me laugh thinking about what actually happens when you remove hair to protect something. Mm. Just throwing a rabbit in front of you to stop an attack. I Maybe it's think just it's like, um, like you put on a bunny hood and suddenly you're super fast and can dodge anything. Maybe. Maybe. Either that or it just confuses mm. the enemy so much that they stop their attack. Nurume is added to the hand, and Quillen is sent to the graveyard. Quillen can be banished to destroy a face-up card, if you have a Beast Warrior Bujin. Tomiko has picked up an Infernity Archfiend, and now he's in business. He can use the Greffer's ability to put the Archfiend in the graveyard, and then special summon out Necromancer with Stygian Street Patrol, or he can do it the other way around. Send Necromancer to the graveyard and special summon out Infernity Archfiend. Either way, it all starts with Dark Greffer. And he sends Infernity Archfiend to the graveyard to try to send another Dark Monster to the graveyard. This resolves. Second Street Patrol. And it is quickly banished to special summon the Infernity Necromancer. With no cards in hand, Infernity Necromancer's ability to revive monsters is active, yep. but is negated by Effect, Effect Failure. And things are not looking good for Tomiko at this point. With two Archfiends in the graveyard and the threat of Susano wiping his entire field very real. And looking at it, it's something that can happen. He's still got an, a lot of life points and a bunch of soul charges left in his deck, though, along with Infernity Launcher. So there are actually a pretty good number of outs for Oliver. Just depends on how aggressive Niccolo decides to get. He's got the Quillen in the graveyard, so he doesn't even need to attack to get rid of Necromancer if he doesn't want to. Looks like he wants to, though. Picking up a crane this turn. And at this point, you're maybe thinking, well, if I can make Susano right now, that lets me get any Bujin from my deck to the hand or graveyard. So I could spend a pair of Quillins, or one Quillin in this case, because the Necromancer is in defense position, to just inflict as much damage as I possibly can yeah. and reduce the chance of a massive soul charge play later on. Oh, and there goes the Quillin. Banishes the Quillin. Because he banished, he special summons Arasuda. And that's going to let him make his Xyz summon without using the Yamato. Excellent play from Nikola this time. It attaches. Attaching Arasuda. To go get another Bujin Harume. And he'll special summon that as well. You can only control one. Doesn't mean you can't control multiples over a different span of time, as long as only one's there. Yeah. And this represents a lot of damage. Attacking. Necromancer's attacking. destroyed. Greffer's destroyed. He keeps the crane. Yamato and Hirame straight into his face. 4,200 left. Now, with the Susano at 4,800, he could have had an extra 3,100 damage there. Yeah. And with that damage, Oliver would have been reduced. I believe it put him down into... Uh... No, not quite into cowboy range, no. but into the range where... It would be very costly be for very him to difficult play to soul, soul charge. charge. Yeah. It's not 3,100 additional damage, it's 3,100 damage total no. instead of 7. As you said, Oliver has nothing on the field and nothing in hand. He would need to top that soul charge. And we're seeing another XC summon right here which is going to be... Yep. There's Rhapsody and Berserk. And he's going to use both materials there to try to cut off the Soul Charge play. He didn't get him down to low enough life points, so instead he's going to take out the targets. I believe that was two Archfiends he removed there. And now Susano is at 600. That's it. Oliver picks up Infernity Barrier, and that is it for the turn. Or for the game, rather. Yeah. With no cards left, Maiko is forced to concede. And Niccolò Mazzolini 
goes up one game to nothing in the battle for third. No, it's kind of a shame that he didn't get a hand like that during uh, his game. Yeah, and he's probably thinking that to himself game. right now. <laughs> yeah. But if you start thinking that way, you lose the moment and you start making mistakes. Yeah. Now, he's side decking quite a lot there. And to say he took such an easy win out of that? Well, he knows he has to go second again this time. Yeah. First time around, no choice. This time around, he has the choice. And we're probably going to see those max C's coming in. Mind control, useful for another way to get the Archfiend off the field yep. and then hide it beneath an Xyz monster. Needle sealing, handy. Dust tornado, useful. Not as useful as Mystical Space Typhoon, but still useful. When you can't run five Mystical Space Typhoons, you can also have Dust Tornado. Yep. Dimensional Prison will help. Dimensional Prison will help as long as you can get a foothold in the duel. Uh, soul Release? Soul Release, very useful. We saw him bring out Rhapsody and Berserk in this previous game, and having a spell card version of it that doesn't require him to field two monsters could be very useful. Normally used for Lightsworn, but it has applications here as well. Only one Lightsworn deck in the entire World Championship. That really surprises is me. Lightsworn Dragon Ruler deck. They didn't really get hit that much by the list. Well, they lost uh, two copies of Needlebug Nest, it and the problem always with Lightsworn is surviving long enough so that you can play all those gargantuan monsters, because you've got Judgment Dragon, you've got Light Ray Diabolos, and you've got Dragon Rulers as well. But if you can't get a ton of cards into your graveyard and you don't even care what they are, just put them all in there, then you might not last long enough. And that's what happened in the finals of the European Championship as well. Yeah. Curry Band couldn't get going, and Eugene was the winner. Quick check, making sure that everybody's side deck is still 15 cards, as it was at the start. Man, I wish I could have one of those game mats. Apparently so do a lot of people. They won't leave you alone about it. No, no. Actually, I uh, checked right after this, and I got a lot of messages asking if I could get them a game mat. See, that's the tech. I just straight out told people on television that I would not get them one. Yeah. And it's Captain Moy. Okay, I'm not going to get you one. There you go. Heard it here first. Did you buy shuffle? Did you own deck? Yeah. And you also heard it here first, though uh, I don't think you'd need any inside information or even Jarell's Ring of Power to know that Oliver's going to go first. Yeah. In what could be his last duel of the 2014 World Championship. It's funny, I've never seen him use his Ring of Power before. Well, it's only for dire times. Oh. This is day two. Of yeah. the World Championship. Okay, much more at stake. I mean, he had to load up after the previous World Championship. Maybe if he had the Ring of Power, the left leg would have made it to his hand. Maybe. And that's Maybe. one of the things that you can do. You can always reflect on the past and get ready for the future. And that's not why he got, got the Ring of Power together. And now he's got it, and we are all better for this. You know that he's getting probably very angry that we just said that. <laughs> I can imagine his face. Just there. Well, We'll talk to him later. <laughs> no, he'll talk to us. <laughs> All right, and we're getting one last shuffle. The shuffling procedures for day two are even more rigorous than day one. They're intense. As we can see that even the judges are getting in all, all the shuffling action. Yeah, the judges have to. It is a kindness to the players, though, so, so they don't. A... Archfiend, a Necromancer, a Soul Charge, a soul Summoner Monk, and another card which I didn't catch. I believe Seems workable. It may have been an old, Oh, it's a Dark Hole. Which this is, is definitely a workable hand. There's more monsters than you like, but because you have that Summoner Monk and a couple of spells to use, this is a playable one. Yeah. And uh, there's a nice enough hand for there. Max C, just to make him really think about the fact whether he needs to Special Summon. Monk is summoned, goes to defense position, and it's activates its effect, discarding Dark Hole, and Mausolini has the max C. Now, tomiko has got some thinking to do. Something I'd like to mention is uh, the Dark Hole there, now in Ultra Rare, if you uh, go and get the brand new space-time structure deck. Oh, that's right, yeah, it's in all of them. It's in one of the uh, power-up packs. Yeah. 
So if you want an even shinier dark coal, that's where you get it. In the face of Max C, you kind of have to set up for the future. And he does with Dark Greffer. Discarding or uh, sending Archfiend for the effect of Greffer. This time, Maslini doesn't have the effect Veiler. To Micah's fight, even though he has to stop, basically stop for now, because he doesn't want Maslini to get too many cards in hand, having the Soul Charge really helps you just in case your board gets wiped. Mazzolini gives the okay, even though he actually couldn't do anything about it. And Oliver's off to the deck to send a dark monster to the graveyard, which is Stygian Street Patrol. That out of the way. Our judge takes his turn shuffling. And Oliver ends his turn. And that Max C happened to get him just deep enough into the deck for Bujin Yamato to make an appearance. There's also that Needle of Sealing in hand. Mm, needle of Sealing, Fiendish Chain. That's nice. With Yamato and Mikizuchi. That Max C really bought him the turn he needed. Motto is summoned. And he moves to battle to attack Dark Greffer. Definitely the right move, attacking the Greffer instead of the Summoner Monk. Chances of Oliver having another monster in hand pretty high at this point, and he doesn't want it to be discarded to send another Stygian Street Patrol to the graveyard. If that's going to happen, Oliver will need to have monster and a spell. And in that case, the Fiendish Chain will strip him of his mon will strip him of the effect of Summoner Monk and the spell in hand discarded as a cost. Yeah. You always want your Fiendish Chain to be as costly as possible to your opponent. And there goes the hair. In the end phase, hair is added to the hand and sent to the graveyard which sets up for a uh, needle sealing play. It does. Two more <laughs> monsters on Oliver's side of the field will allow him to trigger the trap. And Oliver picks up Archfiend Palabyrinth. We talked a bit about that yesterday, yeah. but we never actually saw it in action. Now, I'm looking, and that looks like an upstart goblin to me. Oh, yes, it is upstart goblin. My eyes deceive me. I guess if you look at upstart goblin in just the right way, it does look like a terrifying demon palace. Yes, yes, it does. It's kind of terrifying in its own way, though. A little bit. It's the greedy goblin, though, isn't it? Yeah. Fiendish Chain is used to negate that Summoner Monk ability. And he's lost that card drawer as well. But he does have a Soul Charge, which is going to cost him quite a lot, thinking yes. about what is going to happen. So he's going to try not to play it. And he can't play it yet until he sets the Soul Charge. It is an illegal activation, so the play is reversed, and Oliver now must perform it the correct way. Archfiend to summon, and its effect activates. Now the question is, is he going to wait until a possible soul charge, or is he going to go to needle ceiling as soon as this comes out? Well, he wants to see what the card is first. It's Infernity Launcher. Now, that gives him a little more information about how long he should hold off on the on the, on the Needle Sealer. And 
he's now asking Oliver to wait as he thinks after the resolution of that card. Especially because he picked up a, Oliver picked up his extra deck, meaning that if he does XC summon, there's no longer going to be four monsters on the field. Correct. And he's weighing his options, seeing if there will be four again or if this is the one shot. He says, go for it. I know you have Watcher. You're probably going to use it later this turn, and that adds two more monsters to the field. Your only two matching monsters are the Archfiend and the Summoner Monk. So you have to leave Necromancer B for now. Oh, it's a Diamond Direwolf. Unfortunately for Mazzolini, Tomiko sniffed out that Needle Ceiling and destroys Diamond Direwolf and the Needle Ceiling. And now he's free to do whatever he wants. Sets Inferno to launcher. And flips Soul Charge. Interesting. Soul Charge for three on Dark Greffer, Infernity Archfiend, and Stygian Street Patrol. Okay. Now, Niccolo knows that that face down card is going to be Infernity Launcher. Yes. I'm going to bring that up for you. That's why I kind of wonder why he played the Soul Charge first before the launcher. Because in general, you want to play the cards that your opponent knows about first, leave them with as many mysteries as possible. Model well, Valchain is XC summoned. Now he can't do his battle phase this turn. And he knows what his opponent's playing. So it's Correct. very, very interesting what's happening right now because Niccolo has a massive option for a huge attack next turn. The thing you got to do if you're Oliver in this case is just search out as many of your traps as you oh, possibly can. Oh, is that can. an Infinity Barrier? barrier? Uh, it looked like Break. Right. So he's got Launcher face down and Break. Mm. That could definitely uh, stop him in his tracks. See Summon of Levier, Special Summon back. Stygian Street Patrol. Appears he has combined it with Infernity Archfiend for another XC summon. Oliver playing all three Lava Belt Chains. Sahabi, who defeated him in the previous round, was not. Second Dying Dire Wolf comes to the field and it destroys itself and the Infernity Archfiend to clear space. Archfiend and Necromancer are summoned by Infernity Launcher and Oliver searches his deck once again. This time, it's another Infernity Archfiend, and with the Stygian Street Patrol in the graveyard, he can summon it straight from his hand. And that'll go for another search. This time for Infernity Barrier. And there it is. Niccolo makes a quick check to make sure he knows which set card is which, or rather in which order they were set. And Oliver makes Yet another level Val chain. That's his third. Archie Eris sent to the graveyard. And now we have Archie Palabyrinth. Maybe I was just seeing into the future. The Labyrinth is activated. And so is its effect. Rather, so is Archfiend's effect. And now we see Archfiend Palaparin's effect. Let's go ahead and bring up Palaparin if we can. Sure thing. It's a big amount of text. So you target one of your Archfiends and one of your non-fiends. And you get to banish the other one you targeted to special summon another fiend-type monster from your deck, or an Archfiend with the same level. And in this case, it's Infernity Archfiend. Yeah. Who would have guessed? Now that, that's a formidable field. It is. 
And he's saying your turn. Barrier, break, break, labyrinth, a couple of 2300 arch fiends, a couple of 1800 chains, and an 1800 Levier. Huge. I was thinking back to last game when the Lava Ball chain was destroyed in battle. This time, Oliver still has one left. He has two Infernity Breaks and an Infernity Barrier. Three Infernity Breaks and an Infernity Barrier. He's wow. got the full setup here. And despite how good it looked like things were going a little earlier for Mazzolini, not so much now. And the really great thing about the way Oliver has it set up is that he's got two face-up attack position Infernity monsters. So even if the Quillen were to be activated to uh, get rid of one of them, there would still be another one there and he could save his Infernity Barrier for later. Just thinking what order you can do in. It's a shame that that Infernity Break is there. Very tough situation. But if Mazzolini can, he wants to try to win this one and not have to go to another game. It's not the worst thing if you do, though, as he's heavily sided for things like this. And he would get the first move in the last duel. Mazzolini starts off with Bujin Mikizuchi. Oliver takes a quick check, see what its powers are. This is a tough situation. Probably pondering, should I use, well, should I attack first and try to go after both Archfiends? Should I attack and try to take out the Xyz monsters? Should I use the Quillen first to take out one of the Archfiends and then do everything I can to get rid of the other one? But none of that helps with all of the Infernity Breaks around. Now, sorry, was he attacking the Levier there? He seems to have opted to attack the Levier. Which is a smart move, because he can't really attack any of the Archfiends. Now, the Levier is the most pressing threat in terms of starting up another combo next turn, because Oliver has a couple of monsters that can perform more special summons banished. Necromancer's out there, and I believe a Stygian Street Patrol is out there as well. And you don't want him getting back a level 4, summoning another rank 4, and grabbing a monster a special summon with the Street Patrol. Infernity Break is activated. And he targets his Infernity Launcher and it seems the attacker as well. Hair is used, and a second break is chained, targeting the same launcher. You can do that, it's just your first one will not resolve as its uh, graveyard target is gone. But in this case, Oliver could safely target both since the second one wasn't going to resolve successfully anyways. And now Yamato is in a bit of a spot. Third Infernity Break is activated. And there's nothing else to be done to save Yamato. But Buj Incarnation is lurking in Mazzolini's hand.
There is also that Infernity Barrier. Yep. Barrier wasn't used, though. Oliver played his cards very smartly. And he quickly uses the barrier. And I do believe he has more than 8,000 attack on the field. I don't think he's going to attack. Activation is negated. Yes. Activation of Boot Incarnation is negated, so Pawn of Duality does work, and he really needs to see Dark Hole right now. Unfortunately. Oh. And that cuts Colosseum far too late. Dark Hole is nowhere in his deck list, not even in the side deck. Really? Yes. That surprises me. And he's not even going to make the decision. He's just going to scoop it up. Next two cards weren't going to do a whole lot of good either. And we're nope. going to a third duel in our third place match. This time, though, Niccolo is going to be able to go first, and he has all of that main deck Infernity hate in addition to the cards he's been siding in. Any one of Vanity's Emptiness or Fiendish Chain or his limited trap cards, Solemn, Bottomless, and Torrential Tribute, any trap card, basically, is what Mazzolini wants to see here. Possibly more than one. Other than that, though, it's pretty much the first time we've seen the Infernity deck do what it wants to do. Yeah, this and is the best. The it's first interesting to see combat. that it happened even in the face of Max C. Yeah. Max C bought Mausolini the turn, but he couldn't do enough with it to stop Aller from just coming back and playing out all of the Infernity combos. It's a real, it's a, it's a shame for Niccolo because if he hadn't been able, if Oliver hadn't been able to get out all of his Infernity breaks and the Infernity barrier, then it was a clear. I'm going to get out of Susanoo yeah. and just attack all of your guys with a crane. That's where the Palabrinth comes in handy, though. Yeah. It's a lot harder to get to all three breaks and barrier if you don't have Palabrinth in your deck. Yeah. It just give you that, that option. And, uh, something else I said yesterday, seven piles. That's how you know it's serious. Yeah. Especially when you're then turning those piles into smaller piles. Oliver's really hoping for Maybe a few less monster cards yeah. this time around. Really looking he's had for the at least distribution three in uh, both games. Play 17 monsters total. It's about average, I think, for Infernity. 16 is the number I usually see, and it's good that he has the very diversified special summoning core. As Savavi had uh, two Dinotherium and yeah. a tin Goldfish, and he wasn't playing Photon Thrasher. I actually really like the Thrasher. I think in a lot of situations, it is better to have multiple ways you can special summon on the first turn. And but I also see where Sabi's coming from, not necessarily putting it all on the first yeah. turn. I mean, Fertile Thrasher is just always a, it's a nice play because it's a level four, you can get out of rank four. And with so many good rank fours, a turn one XE summon is, is invaluable. Absolutely. And being able to have reinforcement of the army in your deck as well, which you already have for your other warriors. Just giving it another target. Yeah, giving yourself the option to search for a special summon, like an actual legit special summon. Yeah. With reinforce with the reinforcement of the army you already play is huge. Mazzolini, no surprise there, has decided to go first. And he takes a look at his hand, which has plenty of cards. Oh, that's not a massively good hand for Oliver there. It's got plenty of cards to stop Oliver, but not a whole lot to actually win the game with. Between a pair of effect failures, Maxi and Kaiser Coliseum. But this turn he gets to see eight cards instead of five, because Pot of Duality is going to reveal pot two trap duality. cards and a Pot of Duality. You can't feel bad about having Torrential Tribute or Fiendish Chain here, though. No. You just it's also just... don't feel very good because you can't start winning the game. You're just preventing yourself from losing. Now that's... It's a very difficult choice. Yeah. And he takes the duality over Torrential and Fiendish Chain. He figures, well, I've got enough cards to stop this already in my hand. What I need to do is dig for Bujins. 
And I'll do that next turn because I'm pretty sure Oliver's not getting all his combos this time. Well, Oliver's definitely not getting his combos this time. He has not a great hand. Instant Fusion, Infernity Launcher, Infernity Break, Dark Hole, and Palabyrinth. That's not going to get you anywhere. You need at least one monster. Doubt Call is going to clear the field, but wow. Clear the field of what? Nothing. That a standstill of a bad hand by the look of it. And Possibly, there's a yeah, summer like, morning. He takes the opportunity to set the warning, and I, he saves the positive duality for now. He isn't pressed to dig through his deck any deeper because Oliver simply passed his turn. Shuffles up three cards and sets them face down. And that looks like it's probably going to be Infinity Break. Some wanting a dark hole. Mazzolini now has double Valor, double Max C. And now he uses his Pot of Duality, finding Tanky, Hirume, and Turtle. Tanky is the obvious choice here. And now he's going to be in a very good position. Oliver has no response. So he's going to be able to get a Yamato to hand. And he's going to be able to load up the hair as well. Yeah, unfortunately, I think that there's going oh, to no, be... Oh, no, he's yep. got Solemn Warning, yes. That's the Solemn Warning. That was his sixth card for the turn. Very fortunate for Oliver that he had that Solemn Warning at the time. Otherwise, things would go very south very fast. Oliver's up, and he's got another spell. This time it's Mystical Space Typhoon, and he sets it. Mazzolini barely looks at his next draw before setting it straight to his spell and trap card zone. It's Fiend's Chain. It's the Yugi Moto move. Saw that with Fiend Sanctuary in the Battle City Finals. Oliver finally picks up a monster, and it's Archfiend Eris. The Labyrinth is up next, boosting her up to 1,500. The early offense is good, and if Eris is sent to the graveyard by a card effect, he gets a search for and Archfiend. Second tanky comes off the top of the deck for Mazzolini, but Mystical Space Typhoon puts a stop to that. No searches for Mazzolini. And he's still stuck on two maxi to effect failure. This looks like a game where Archfiend Eris might have a chance to take out all 8,000 life points the way it's going. Oliver knows it too, and he's getting in every point of damage he can. Instant Fusion, Necromancer, and Infernity Launcher in hand. Kaiser Coliseum. Unfortunately, no monster to use it with. He's got a bunch of pears in his hand. He's seen two Kaisers this turn. No, Kaiser was last game. Two effect failure, two max C, Kaiser Coliseum. As Archfiend plinks away 1,500 points at a time. And Mausolini's stuck on nothing but face down cards. rate this match is going, I'd be shocked if we see four monsters on the field at all in the entirety of it. I don't think Needle Ceiling is going to be resolving. Not at all. He's just chipping away with that Archfiend. And Oliver's got a pretty good hunch that he hasn't got Torrential Tribute because it was sent back from Pot of Duality. And it's not often that the cards you sent back come back again. Now Phoenix Chain. At this point, though, as Lady says, Archfiend Eris is far too strong, far too strong. And he uses Fiendish Chain to lock it down. Now, there still is an instant fusion in there, so the Fiendish Chain isn't that worrying. Because you could get a nice XC summon out of this. Yes, I believe Oliver plays a level 3 fusion monster. Go. Or does he? Now he's got Camion Wizard, and that is his only fusion monster in the extra deck. He's not playing the fusionist that many people have put into their extra deck. Now, I guess he used that extra spot for a second Diamond Direwolf, which actually really served him well in the last duel. Uh, there's a funny story about fusionist. Um, 
there was a friend of mine that went back when Extra Decks was called the Fusion Deck, and you could have as many in there as you wanted. The only way that you were allowed to play a Fusion Deck is if you had Fusionist in there, because that made your fusions work. Hmm. There was no logic in that. But then again, there's no logic in the materials that make Fusionist. And now it seems like Mazzolini's finally come up with a monster to go with his double Kaiser Colosseum. And it is Bujingi Crane. He does not attack, though. Oh, Dark Hole. Has been flipped. Dark Hole's activated. That takes Crane off the field. That disables the Kaiser Colosseums, and it is a card effect, so he gets to search for Archfiend Eris for that Infernity Archfiend. There is also the Photon Thrasher there as well. Dark Hole coming up huge, and he's able to special summon that Photon Thrasher now that he has no monsters. Trap Stun is activated. This is one of the defining features of Tomiko's deck, is the Trap Stuns to prevent interference. Thrasher is special summoned. He also runs very little traps as well. Instant Fusion activated. Maxi is chained. Camion Wizard comes out. And here is the question. In this, the final duel of the third and fourth place game, will Oliver Tomiko take the Maxi challenge? He's got a clear shot to life points. He has Trap Stun resolved. And he could win. He's got 3,500 life points left to take out. I'm thinking, well, the double effect failure is going to make it difficult because what Oliver would want to do is summon Lava Val Chain and get Stygian Street Patrol into the graveyard. In this case, he goes ahead and normal summons the Infernity Archfiend. If he makes an Xyz summon here, he should have it. And he's looking to do it. 18 and 18 would be enough, 36. The needle ceiling's not really going to do a whole lot. No. XC summon. There goes. Taking a look at Kane Gorgon just in case something happens. Also, it is among the biggest monsters in his extra deck, if yep. not the biggest. Kane Gorgon is summoned. He drew into Booj Incarnation. Azzolini draws. Effect Veiler is used. He's doing everything he can to try to convince Tomiko not to just rush him and end the duel right now. Yeah, there's nothing that he can do. Activating Effect Veiler at the end of the main phase. See what Tomiko will do. In fact, looking at it, Infinity Archfiend is on 2,300 attack. 2,300 attack. There's really nothing Mazzolini can do here, but he's desperately trying to convince the duelist from the United States that he has plenty of options. Well, let's just have a look and see what they're looking at there. Kane Gorgon, looking oh. to see how exactly its effect works. You got to do everything at this point to try to prolong the duel and make Tomiko think about his next move. Got a quick cameo from the official card database. Yep. You can find it under the gameplay section on our website. All right, so he's using the effect to stop Effect Failure? Uh, looks like he's using it to shift the effect of Effect Failure over to Infernity Archfiend. Yeah. And we see that Kane Gorgon is not a once per turn effect. And in this case, we see the second Veiler. Okay, so, yeah, yeah. And he is not going to bother, and he's going to attack. 2300 from Archfiend. And that's 2450 the game. does it. And that's it. All Niccolo of Mazzolini draws all of the Infernity Hate, none of the Bujan monsters. 
And, and Oliver Tomiko Oliver. takes a duel. He steals one here in yeah. game three. It, it's funny because... With a hand where just about nothing was going right at first, and he had to deal the first 4,500 damage with a boosted Archfiend Eris. Yeah, it's like Niccolo got all of the hate yep. for it, and Oliver didn't actually get any Infernity. <laughs> you go first, you get all these cards, and you say, just one, just one Bujin monster. Give me a Yamada. You know, I'll take a Mikazuchi. I don't care. Give me anything. And his deck did not cooperate. And when he finally got Crane, Dark Hole. Dark Hole. I mean, if you're fighting Crane versus Eris, yeah, something's going that's wrong. That's not exactly the War <laughs> of the Giants. Something is going wrong. So we have Oliver. Oliver now Michael of the United States. Third place finish in the All Ages event. Yep. A very respectable finish for last year's Dragon Tool champion. Yeah. I think he had fun here this weekend. I saw him out and about. He was playing the games. I was over there, actually. We were uh, trying out the air cannon yeah. before the broadcast, and Oliver was... I wouldn't want to say he was calming his nerves because he's never calm. He's always so pumped. He's absolutely <laughs> so ready for everything. You should have seen how excited he was about his uh, penguin trousers. Oliver loves life, loves dueling, loves yes. everything. He's yes. absolutely great. And honestly, even if you're one of the older duelists, he's actually somebody to look up to. He's really a great player, great person. And all the best to him. On his third place finish here. Well, Niccolo came in fourth, and you can pretty much say the same about Niccolo. Niccolo is always happy. Uh, something that we really struggle, even though everybody's having fun, nobody seems to smile. Well, that's kind of a solemn occasion. Yeah. You get kind of in the zone. But even yeah. when they, w even when some people win, they won't smile. No, I. Oh yeah. But I, I, mean, re I remember at European Championships, we were having a trouble of just, uh, so just asking somebody to smile, and as soon as we asked Nicolay, we just went yes. When you're playing, though, even after the game's over, you know, you're kind of, you're locked into the game. That's what you're thinking about right now, not what's happening later, not what you have just won. Yeah. It's just that round, getting that victory. And you can think about it later. You've got plenty of time between rounds to think about all that. But we also saw Niccolo, actually, on the way back to the hotel. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Um, we were all in the shuttle bus, all of us and a few of the Konami employees, and we noticed that there was just a car in front of us, and stuffed into the boot of the car was Niccolo. What? <laughs> uh, pressed up against the glass, just, like, giving us the thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> so that's your fourth place winner for the World Championships. I'm sure he'll be going home in the boot again. Niccolo Pasolini of Italy <laughs> takes fourth place with Bujins. Oliver Tomaiko of the United States takes third place with Infernity. And with that, I think we're going to go ahead and turn it over to our analysts and Jessica. If they are ready. Maybe we're not going to turn it over to our oh, analysts. Oh, hey, there guys. Go. And we are back. Thank you, Jerome and Rob. So I'm here standing with my wonderful analysts. Guys, what did you think of that match? I was long. <laughs> that was a long match. But... It was a long game, too. Yes, mm -hmm. um, but fantastic to watch uh, for third and fourth place off in Oliver, uh, holding on to that little bit of glory, finishing third place in this World Championship tournament. Uh, how about you guys? What do you think of that thing overall? Awkward game three. Um, game three was very awkward. Got indeed. to see Nicolo draw like all of his hate with no ability to use a lot of it. Uh, some one or two questionable plays towards the end there. I think we all agreed. Yeah, we can. Uh, Oliver not opening very strongly either. Just no monsters whatsoever, and then just swinging with that Archfiend Eris like over and over again. Yeah, just t chunking him down one piece at a time. Yeah. Jarrell, what are your thoughts? I just want to go straight to the first highlight. Okay, let's do that. In this highlight, you will see a very epic Kaiser Coliseum play, which I thought was the the fake sealer, but then Oliver just had the mystical space typhoon for it. Yeah, the Kaiser Coliseum, very good against that turn one Infernity. Uh, Infernity push. So they simply cannot put that number of monsters down, meaning they can't, well, another reason they can't empty their hands and Correct. can't make all of those really powerful cards. But just a simple Mystical Space Tifoon. Probably a reason why you shouldn't take Mystical Space Tifoon out of your main deck is just for situations like this. Because it is it is still being played quite a lot. Yep. Indeed, true. But um, he, Oliver needed to mount the board in a way that the Graffer would have resolved and everything, you know? So. Yeah. Should we take a look at highlight number two? Yes, that is a, a famous effect veiler play. Let's take a look. 
So Oliver summoned a necromancer. Going for the necromancer for a potential special summon play on the Archfiend, which was denied by the effect failer. Just putting a stop to all of the nonsense that a uh, Infernity deck can throw at you. Nicolo um, again with three copies of Valor Main. So yeah, well that's, uh, that. that's a lot of hate uh, to have in, the, have in the main deck. Uh, but then he knew that Infernity was the breakout deck for this tournament. Mm -hmm. Oliver's main focus was to send as much cards to the, gra as the graveyard as he could so he can have some type of foundation. But that was automatically shut down by the third highlight. Our favorite, oh, number the 80. guy who's on the giant banner behind us. The 50, yeah. Mm -hmm. The 50 meter banner? Yeah, the 50 meter banner. Many PJs high. Just uh, taking away more of just two of the uh, arch fiends. Arch Wait, two of those arch fiends. And then getting a massive monster. That yeah, really strapping. sealed the game. Yeah, nice. That's, that's actually, yeah, the scooping point. Yeah. Was there any, there was nothing he could do even if it wasn't number 80, right? That was number 80. No, no, no. I mean, if he didn't play number 80, well, I didn't see what uh, Oliver drew there. Oh, Oliver drew a friendly barrier. Oh, okay. So, yeah, it was he was just going to be slammed by the attacks anyway. But number 80 showing up and just taking away any possible out that, for example, a soul charge draw. Like, could have happened. Perhaps he's been like a huge MVP in this tournament. Yes, he has. He really he's, has. Every time he showed up, he's done something. Yeah. Just shrinking the number of options that players have to get out of these tough situations they're being pushed into. The Infirities and Bujans being such big matchups for, well, and Madolce is like, almost every matchup in this, this tournament is vulnerable to that card. I feel like we've seen it so much more frequently than you would in like a normal YCS or WCQ. Yeah, we were surprised that we didn't see enough of it in uh, what I felt for WCQ Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. um, bar barely seeing it sort of come up towards the end of the event, but uh, here we see it being uh, an all-star. Throw it to the next highlight. Yeah, let's see. Let's take sure, a look. let's go to highlight four. So this is game two, right? Yes, this is when Oliver needed to decide on if he wanted to go under the Mag C or not. Oh, he's After ready. the Greffer comes out, though. The Greffer's gonna come out, but now the next thing that Oliver needs to decide on is is, is it crucial? enough for him to mount the board right now so he could try to combat. Yeah, and he's, he's pitched his dark hole there, so if Niccolo has a way of setting up a big field. Yeah, that's uh, some important information that, to be giving away, hucking out the, the dark hole turn one. Back in the day, discarding your dark hole was considered madness. Uh, but then people would make the argument, but I still have Regeki. <laughs> yeah. So. Very interesting turn one, the maxi being very important there, changing the entire flow of that turn for Oliver. Uh, should we go on to the next highlight? The fifth highlight is one of Jason's favorites. Oliver pitching out the Upstart Goblin, trying to use Summoner Monk, eating the Fiendish Chain. Didn't matter because they had the Infernity Necromancer for the Infernity Archfiend play. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sorry, it's been a very, very long weekend, so we're, we're looking at the clips going. That's about it. That he was this game push that again happened. and it didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> But if we but if we just look on highlight number six, we can see one of our favorite cards from the, the first day. Gaga Cowboy? No, Soul yeah, Charge. Soul Charge. Charge. All of us will of course. Have. Uh soul charging for three thousand. Yeah. Immediately pulling up another rank four play and the Archfiend. Ah. Yeah, you can see how that board got out of control so quickly uh, from just a single spell. From out of that, from out of that, right there, Oliver mounts his board into a perfect positioning. Um, I guess uphill battle from right here. And if you look at the ninth highlight, we can see how the 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 board resulted in just straight dominance. Highlight nine. This is when Oliver activates. Oh, this is the uh, 
this is the third game, right? This yes, is, uh, this is the third the dark game. dark hole to get around the Kaiser Coliseum. Yeah. And then he activates the face down. This is, where Nicola, this is where Nicolo finally managed to get his double Kaiser Coliseums online, so he thought he finally had something going, and gets shut down with the, the Dark Hole. The Dark Hole destroys uh, Tomiko's, Tomiko's Archfiend Aris, which means he gets the search for it as well. Just like a bad game for Nicolo, and a glimmer of hope, and then just smash in the most brutal way possible. And that, and that trap stun eventually ended the game, but let's just look at the tenth highlight. Yeah, you you have to wonder should he have set uh, one of those effect veilers or maxis he was holding in his hand just to stop the hemorrhaging yeah. of the damage. So I mean. Nicolo's back row right now, his only back row set is needle sealing, and he has these effect veilers that he like pitches away. And if he'd set one of them, I'm sure he had at least one of them before the max C, right? Oh, well, this is a turn that um, Oliver Dark Hold the Herodus. Yeah. So there would have been no monsters on the turn. Oh, that's and why the, I can't do it. And the game is over right now. But now I'm going to give it to Jessica. Yeah.